Have you already heard the theory of the six degrees of separation? This theory states that people connect themselves to up to six connections. In other words, it would take six bonds of friendship to meet two people that doesn't know each other. In the 60s, male had six degrees of separation. That means a male had to go through six person to put in relation two random people on the earth. In a hyper connected world as today, social networks have brought us and even closer, juggling between 3.5 degrees of separation and 4.5. That's why we are all, you are all very close to someone that might open the door of your professional life. I personally tried it, this theory, and for example, with Barack Obama, I am at three degrees of Barack Obama. With the Pope, I'm at two degrees. With Thomas Pesquet, I'm at three degrees. With Neymar, well, no, that doesn't count. He's my buddy. Let's move on. I'm going to start by telling you a little story. I started using social media very early. I think I was 12 years old at a time, you know, where it was fashionable to post on Facebook all your life. A few years ago, I decided to go back on my account, wasn't the best idea, and I found some content, and I have to say, I was embarrassed. Very embarrassed. Because I think you do not really care about the fact that when I was 12, I was taking pasta with my buddy Greg, or that my love situation was a bit complicated when I was 10. I'm going to pursue my story. Um, after graduating from high school and getting my baccalaureate, uh, I joined a business school. Like all students during business school, I was part of associations, and I was even in the student council, and I was also going to some parties. Arrived the time where I had to find my first job. You know, this awkward moment. Uh, and I spent dozens of hours working on my CV, working on my cover letter, applying to jobs. And then the moment had come, I had secured an interview, cherry on top, with one of the company I was really eager to join. I arrived at the, in at the interview super exciting about meeting the, you know, the new partner. And, and I arrived in front of, of this recruiter, and this is how I thought that he was seeing me. Dressed smart, suit and tie, looking professional. The fact is, that's not the reality, because this is how the recruiter probably sees me as a young student after four years of business school. Well, it's not the worst photo, but it's not the most professional photo, too. The real problem is, this is how the recruiter would have seen me if he had decided to go on social networks, and if, of course, I hadn't done an online reputation check. This example shows us, and here we've got a question that we can ask ourselves, is what would happen in this case? Answer A, would I be hired for this job? Or answer B, the recruiter wouldn't hire me because the impact might be a bit negative for the company. Of course, I think we all have the answer, and I think it's going to be a bit complicated for me to be hired after this picture. But just to reassure you, it wasn't me on the picture. Today, with our use of social networks, we are all being monitored, and above all, we are all being judged. Whether it's before going on a date, before meeting your boss, your colleague, a friend, we all do the same thing. We Googleize the person. What does it mean? It's simple. We're going on Google, we're tapping the name of the person, and then we're going to get the five first links and make a first opinion about this person that we have never met of our life. Yeah, it's a bit strange, I'm okay with you. For example, maybe some of you have checked my LinkedIn profile or have Googleized me before coming at the TEDx to know more about myself. So I have to be honest with you, I did the same thing with some of you, and I have to say I found some sensitive content. For example, someone sleeping after a party or someone with some bottle of vodka. Of course, I asked the people before posting this picture. The fact is, we can see the impact it can have on our career and, uh, and on our credibility. The other point is that many people always ask me, and they always tell me, that it's only politicians or, po or personalities that should be careful. The real problem is that even them are not being careful. I'm going to tell you a second example, just as concrete as the first one. A few years ago, a former minister, French minister, 
was accused of organizing private dinners, paid, of course, with public money. Exquisite dinners with expensive bottles of champagne, of wine, and of course, to accompany these giant lobsters. The fact is, after an avalanche of tweets, because this story has become viral, after an avalanche of tweets, he decided to make a public statement on TV by denying this post and saying that it wasn't for him because he was allergic to seafood and because champagne, I quote, gives him a headache. Unfortunately for him, some tweet posted several years ago resurfa has resurfaced and I think we can easily see and say that he might not be so allergic to seafood and that I believe champagne does not give him a real headache. In 10 seconds, he lost all his credibility and people quickly understood that what he had posted was only based on a lie. The purpose of this example is not to judge you, but just to explain you and to show you the impact that this blind spot linked to the online reputation can have on your everyday career. The other point is that social networks are totally borderless. We use them every day in any context. So you have to be careful. For example, if you want to go to the, to the United States next year, you will have to fill in your social media username at the airport. Or another example, if you're looking for a job, today, 80% of recruiters analyze their candidate social networks. And 41% of internet users know someone whose career has been negatively impacted because of his online reputation. There's another point I wanted to talk about with you today, is the fact that it's not as simple as we may think it is to delete definitely something on the internet. When I talk to friends, family, or even someone I, I do not really know, know, they always all tell me the same thing. There's no problem about my online reputation because I'm private in all my accounts. And I always answer the same thing. Do you really think you can be considered as a private person when you have got 600 followers on Instagram or 800 followers on Facebook. Of course not, and of course the other complicated part is that we can guarantee you that what you have posted has not, be, has not been screenshot by another person. That's why it's, before, it's better to be aware beforehand than fixing the problem afterwards. However, I do not want you at the end of this talk to tell yourself, okay, just bap Baptiste stressed me up, I'm quitting social media, I will never post again. Of course not, and of course, of course, social media are great tools that allows us to communicate. If you want to talk with your friend or your family, and they are at uh, 10, 10 hours by plane uh, from where you are, they're great. And they are also a total memory bank when you can go and dig back some old content, some old memories with your family or with your friends. But the most important thing you have to Ask yourself, does my online identity reflect my true personality? So I want to say to you, be yourself on social media, and of course you can post. Maybe you're going to ask yourself, what can I post? If you're part of an association, if you're passionate about sport, about geopolitics, if you finished the half marathon of Paris two weeks ago, of course you can post these kind of things because it will help you develop your personal branding. And I will, I will end this talk by a small quote that I really appreciate. You only have got one chance to make a good first impression, so don't waste it. Thank you very much.